Electrophilic addition to conjugated dienes. Going to be the topic of this lesson. And if you go back to your alkene addition reactions, it turns out when you do one of those with a conjugated diene, um, you've got a competition going on between multiple products. And uh, depending on your conditions, one might be favored over another. And we'll call one of those the thermodynamic product, and we'll call another the kinetic product. And we're going to learn how to predict them and, and realize under what conditions each would be the major product. Now this lesson's part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post one, subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. All right, so before we dive too far into electrophilic addition to conjugated dienes, I just want to remind you of what electrophilic uh, addition to just a plain old alkene looks like. And specifically this one here with HBr. So in this case, first step, Alkene attacks the H, bond between H and Br breaks. H attached to the less substituted side, leaving us with the more substituted, more stable carbocation, as well as a bromide ion. And then that bromide ion will come back and do nucleophilic attack here, leading us to our final product. So ultimately, this was Markovnikov addition, the H on the less substitute side, the bromine on the more substitute side. And again, Markovnikov addition is uh, what's really behind that is that you're trying to get the most stable carbocation intermediate. And that's going to be key here. So because Markovnikov and, and anti-Markovnikov is not going to be quite so crucial here uh, in terms of how substitute the carbocation, it's going to be more about getting a resonance stabilized carbocation, which is even more important to its stability here with conjugate addition. So when you've got a conjugated diene here, so uh, when you add only one equivalent of one in, in one of these electrophilic additions, you have an issue. So which alkene is the one to more likely react first? So, and that depends on which one can ever produce the more stable carbocation. Well, you know, if I look at the alkene on the left here, so if I have him doing the attacking the H, that H could either add here or here. And normally we'd just be like, well, add it on the less substituted ch side, Chad. Well, again, in this case with a conjugated system, more important than adding it on the less substituted side and getting the more substituted carbocation is really going to be about getting a resonance stabilized carbocation because that, again, that has a, a bigger role when it comes to stability here. So in this case, you really have to consider at least in principle, four possible carbocations. And that's kind of the pain in the butt here. So if you look at the way this works, so let's draw that HBr out. And so let's say we do attack with this one on the left and then break the bond of the bromine. And in this case, let's just add that H on the less substitute side and see what happens. If we add the H here, and actually let's draw it in just for the fun of it, make sure we keep track of things. It's going to lead us to getting a carbocation on this side. If we do it the other way around, which intuitively it's going to feel like you wouldn't want to do. In this case, that'll probably be correct, uh, but we'll see in other cases, maybe not. All right. So that's one set of options here. So let's go look at our other option. What if it's the other alkene that gets to preferentially react? Cause it'll lead to a more stable carbocation and we'll consider that possibility. And so in this case, going like so, and once again, if we consider first and foremost, adding the H to the less substitute side, getting the more substitute carbocation. Again, that's kind of our inclination. It's just the way we've learned Markovnikov and H Markovnikov, it's our gut. And it's probably going to work in this case. It won't necessarily work in every case. So, but we'll come up with a rule for this. And let's say we add the H now to this side instead. That would leave us with the carbocation on that carbon there. So here's the deal. When you look at your conjugated system, what you're going to find is that you want to add whatever your whatever electrophile you're adding first, in this case an H, to either end of the conjugated system. So notice that means either this top one right here or this one right here. And the reason you want to do that is not because that's necessarily the less substituted side and you get the more substituted uh, carbocation, but because if you do add it to the very end of the conjugated system, you'll end up with a resonant stabilized carbocation. So if you look here, this first one here, if you notice the carbocation is allylic, it's one bond away from the alkene, it's allylic, and we should expect resonance. So there's our carbocation. And same thing here, that carbon right there, the carbocation carbon is allylic, it's one bond away from the alkene, and we should expect resonance.
All right, and there's our two possible resonance stabilized carbocations. So, but notice like this carbocation here, it's two bonds away from the alkene. There's no resonance here whatsoever. So it's gonna be significantly less stable than the other two. Even if it by chance happened to be maybe more substituted than one of the original carbons the carbocation looked like it was on, uh, it's still gonna be less stable due to the fact that there's no resonance. Same thing over here. Now, in this example, both these ended up being on the less substituted side. So it made it easier to kind of figure that out. But again, it really is key here. Now, in resonance is something you should pay much more attention to than, you know, adding to the less or more substitute side or whatever Markovnikov meant with a normal alkene. All right. So, but between these two carbocations, we still have to decide. So the major product is going to be made through the most stable carbocation. And so we got to figure out which one of these carbocations is more stable. And so a lot of students would be like, Chad, go with a tertiary one. Well, there is no tertiary carbocation. Because again, this structure doesn't exist. What really exists is the average of these two structures. So you couldn't really just call it a tertiary carbocation. It's a tertiary primary carbocation. That positive charge is shared between two atoms. So we should call it a tertiary primary. It's both. It's more on the tertiary. That'll be the major resonance contributor. That'd be the minor, but it's still a tertiary primary. It's shared on both positions. Whereas this one here is gonna be a secondary primary share between a secondary primary. And so definitely more substitute carbocations are more stable. So the tertiary primary is more stable than the secondary primary. And now we've ruled this one out as well. So in principle, four carbocations, two were not gonna be resonant stabilized, we ruled them out. But then the two that are resonant stabilized, one is more stable than the other, and that's where the major product is gonna be through. Now, if you notice in the original alkene addition reaction, once you got your carbocation, we you know, originally would have considered rearrangements and stuff like that. Probably not something you're gonna see in the conjugate, uh, the addition to conjugated dienes. So, but now bromide's gonna come and attack that carbocation. Well, in this case, because the carbocation is shared in two locations, bromide has the option to attack either, still giving us the possibility of getting two different products. So in this case, if we add to this carbon right here, we'll get this product. And if we add to this carbon right here, we'll get this product right here. So if we take a look at these for a second, and I'm gonna go back and draw that relevant hydrogen back in. So we added the hydrogen here. So we get a couple of different names appearing for these. And so if you look at the first one here, the hydrogen and the bromine are added on two different carbons. And so we might refer to that as the one, two product, just showing that the two, you know, the two things that added, added on adjacent atoms. Whereas in this one, it's one, two, three, four, the one, four product instead. And that's one name we often, you know, use for this kind of addition with conjugated systems. So, but there's uh, some other names we go with based on uh, stability in certain respects. Now, if we look at these, so one of these products, it turns out is gonna be called the thermodynamic product. And the thermodynamic product simply put is just the most stable product. So we've got these two possible products, which one is more stable? Well, in this case, you gotta ask yourself, well, which one is more stable? So, well, it depends. So where are your highest energy electrons? Well, it turns out your highest energy electrons here are the non-bonding ones on bromine. And do you remember the rule we learned for determining you know, when an alkyl bromide is the most stable, if it's on a primary carbon or a tertiary? So your answer should be no, because there is no rule for that. You never learned one, we never learned one. So there's no rule for that. So can't distinguish based on that then. So then you go for the next highest energy electrons. What's the difference there? Well, all the rest of the electrons are bonding, but you should remember that pi electrons are higher in energy than sigma electrons. So the next highest energy electrons are the pi electrons. And you did learn a rule for distinguishing those. And the rule you learned is that the more substituted alkene is the more stable alkene. The more substituted pi bond is lower energy and more stable. And so in this case, this one's monosubstituted. This one here is one, two, three carbons. So tri-substituted. This is the more stable alkene. And therefore, this is going to be the thermodynamic dynamic product. All right, so the other product we talk about is called the kinetic product. Now, most of the time, once you've gotten correctly identified your two products, if one's the thermodynamic, the other's probably the kinetic. But I could, you know, ask you a tricky example where it turns out the same product ends up being both the thermodynamic and the kinetic. So you can't just rely on that. So you got to know your definition. So your most stable product is the thermodynamic product. And that's the one with the most substituted alkene is typically the way that works out. Okay, so far so good. Then what about your kinetic product? 
Well, notice thermodynamics is, is, is a, you know, we, we deal with all these state functions, right? Where it only depends on the initial state and final state of the system. And that's why we only looked at the final state. But kinetics is all about pathway. What's the activation energy of the pathway? Lower activation energy forms faster, higher activation energy forms slower. And so when we talk about the kinetic product, it's just the faster forming product, the one with the lower activation energy. And to figure out what your activation energy looks like, you don't need to look at your products. You need to go back and look at the process here. And so, so your rate determining step here was forming your carbocation. So, however, which, you know, in, in distinguishing between these two products is where does bromide attack? Well, bromide has a choice of attacking this carbon or this carbon. So, and whichever one has a greater buildup of positive charge, well, then bromide would be more attracted there, which ultimately means that he'll attack it with a lower activation energy. And so in this case, again, that positive charge is really shared between the two carbons but more of it is on the tertiary carbon than on the primary carbon. And so when bromide attacks there, that's gonna have a lower activation energy and wherever that leads, so that's the kinetic product. And so here I'm looking there and that leads to this product. So that's our kinetic product. And so one, you know, I, I hate to say this, but you could say, well, whichever one, one of your resonant structures is the more stable carbocation, again, these, Neither one of these is a carbocation. They're both carbocation resonant structures, but they, the carbocation that really exists is the average of these two. So, but if you say, well, you know, attacking the major carbocation resonant structure leads to the kinetic product, you could say that. So not exactly how we should think about it, but you could totally say that. All right, so your thermodynamic and kinetic products, now you gotta talk about when is one favored over another? And we'll draw a lovely energy diagram to kind of figure this out. And so we'll put energy on the y-axis, we'll put the reaction coordinate or reaction progress on the x-axis. And we see these two different products. So we've got our alkene, and then we form a carbocation. And so here we got our alkene forming a carbocation and notice there's just one carbocation. There's not two, there's two resonant structures, but again, they combined represent a single average uh, resonance hybrid, a single carbocation. So that's our carbocation we just formed, you know, endothermic step. And then we've got two options from here. And that's the way these two options are going to play out, something like this. And so if we look, which product is the more stable product, which, whichever one's lower in energy, you look right at the two products and you're like, that one's lower energy, that's called the thermodynamic product. So however, to figure out your kinetic product, you don't look at your products themselves, you look back at the activation energies, whichever one's got a lower activation energy, which is this guy here, whichever product that leads to, which is this one here, that's your kinetic product. And so we're gonna talk about when are these products favored? Well, so your kinetic product's always your faster forming product, but your thermodynamic is always the more stable product. And again, they're usually two different products, but they could in theory be the same product. If the lowest energy overall product also has the lowest activation energy, well, that would be the case. So, but not usually the case in, in addition to these conjugated systems. So if we look at when these products are favored, you have to ask yourself, it's all about temperature, it turns out, and reaction times. So to get your kinetic product, these are usually favored at low temperatures. So at low temperatures, there is not a lot of energy around. And so your energy is at a premium. So you form that carbocation and there's not a lot of energy around. It's like, okay, which product do we form? Well, there's not a lot of energy. So just pick whichever is going to require less energy to form. And that's the lower activation energy. And so... Unfortunately, it's not only the faster forming product, it's also faster to unform it as well. And so at high temperatures, it's still the faster forming product, but can also unform more easily as well. And so eventually all your product ends up going this route preferentially, just because it ends up lowest overall in energy. And so your kinetic product, it's tricky because it's the fastest forming product at all temperatures, but it's not the major product at high temperatures. And so for higher temperatures and longer reaction times, your thermodynamic product is favored. For lower temperatures and shorter reaction times, your kinetic product's favored. That's the deal. And so you'll see a few instances throughout all of OCHEM where we'll do reactions at like, you know, negative 78 degrees Celsius and things of this sort. And usually most of the time, the issue is we're trying to form a kinetic product and we're doing the reaction at very low temperatures to, in order to accomplish forming that kinetic product. So that's kind of the deal. So you'll see this in a few different instances uh, somewhere else later this semester.
Cool. That is Electrophilic Addition to Conjugated Dyings. If you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Uh, simply the best thing you can do to help other students find this lesson. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you're looking for practice problems or practice final exams, a final exam rapid review for your OCHEM class, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com. A free trial is available.